Buckeye Nation, what is up? Floco here with the Ohio State Football with Scarlet and Great here on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. We're looking for 5,000 subscribers before the season starts. Like the video if you like what you see. I am here with my good friend Dylan Freeman at Dylan Freeman VP on Twitter. If you want to, if you want to hook up with him, Dylan, how you doing, buddy? Not too bad. How about you, Corey? Thanks for having me. Oh, it's always good to have you, my brother. It's always good to have you. I'm doing pretty good. I feel pretty good. I feel energetic. You know, we're Buckeye football is right around the corner. We're, as we record this, we're 41 days out. We're Josh Proctor days Who's out. Who's counting, though, right? Who's counting? Yeah, I was like in seven hours on three minutes, you know, whatever. Hey, man, we're, we're already, we're, we're it's get, I'm watching highlights on YouTube now. I'm getting Jones, Jones in for the football here. And it looks like I'm going to the Notre Dame game uh, in September oh, yeah. 3rd. So that'll be fun. My first experience in the shoe, and it'll be a night game against the big boy football Notre Dame, uh, fighting big Irish. Boy, come, uh. I'll give them. No, I'll get. I'll put Notre Dame in that big boy category. You no, know, they, 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 they got. I'm, I'm, you know what, Marcus Freeman? I'll put. I'll give it to you, buddy. You're in that big boy category until we slap you down like the child you are. So anyway, uh, anyway, just kidding, guys. We're going to talk about a topic today that I'm excited about because we have a flood of new assistants in Ohio State staff, right? And I think that's a lot of things what people are curious about, right? They, they want to see how the new staff works together, the different levels of the coaching that goes on and see how the different positions are performing. And you know, Justin Fry with the offensive line, Tim Walton, Perry Eliano with uh, the secondary, these co- corners and safeties. you got Jim Knowles and Coy McFarlane with the linebackers. I mean, it's just like it's a lot, really. It's a, that's, a, that's half your staff almost, it seems like, overall. Um, Dylan, we want to talk about which assistant do you think now, Dylan is a scout. He's He knows the coaches. He knows players. He's, he's been a been part of this business for a very long time. So he has an educated opinion on this. That's why I bring him on here, not because we just want to, you know, shoot the crap. Uh, I am I am an untrained eye. Dylan is a trained eye. Dylan, what do you see? Which assistant do you see having the biggest impact going into this season for Ohio State football? Not necessarily even a full-time assistant. Um, oh. that, you know, I mean, that's getting a position coach. Mm-hmm. Coy McFarland, um, Ooh, the assistant linebacker coach. Okay, yeah, he's he had some big time offers uh, towards the end of the last cycle when he was uh, leaving, mm-hmm. um, and he really felt going with Knowles was the best choice for him. And the, I mean, he showed it. All the if you watched all the Malcolm Rodriguez and a couple of other guys that were in the defensive room and especially the linebacker room at Oklahoma State raved about this guy. He's a young guy, and they really felt that. When Knowles took over the position, as far as he took over the defense, like as far as was like room, you know what I mean, going mm-hmm. over the whole room and kind of talking to everyone and scheming, when McFarland took over the linebacker coach, uh, that was pretty much essentially what he was, linebacker coach there. And That's kind of what he's doing with Ohio State now, right? Yeah, um, yeah. When he go, when uh, Knowles go to to teach the whole room uh, and teach every position, McFarland slides to linebacker coach and pretty much essentially becomes our line, full-time linebacker coach. Um, now, let me ask you something, Dylan. Before we get into what the kind of impact he's going to have on the defense and on the linebackers specifically, why would you tra- turn down offers to be linebacker coach or even possibly D coordinator? I don't know what kind of offers he got. You know what kind of offers he got. Why would he turn those down just to hang around Jimmy Knowles? Does he feel like maybe he needs some more tutelage or maybe that more opportunities will come if he sticks around Jimmy Knowles in Ohio State? A little bit of both. Okay. Um, he wants to keep learning. Like I mentioned, he's a fairly young guy. Um, he had some pretty good offers, like I mentioned, coming um, last year at in the cycle. And he really just wanted to stay with Knowles and kind of learn some more underneath him because he feels that Knowles is the best linebacker coach out there. Um, and he feels learning underneath them is pretty important. And so, I mean, give yourself another year or so under Knowles. Um, that's going to propel you uh, in the end. And mm-hmm. the end game can be a lot better for you. Um, you're going to get work at Ohio State. Um, Oklahoma State's a great program. You know, like we kind of talked about this in the past, Oklahoma State's good. Um, but there's a difference between coaching there and Ohio State, just the pressure, oh, the yeah. expectations, um, their crews that you can possibly work with. Um, so it, there's a lot to like. Um, for his aspect and he gets to kind of maintain all that and then uh, hopefully propel himself to a better job. Um, and pro- I think in the next probably two years or so. Yeah. It'd be interesting though. If like say Perry Eliano, Eliano does a great job with the safeties. He goes on to be a defensive coordinator somewhere. Right. Do we just, instead of let Tim Walton hang over the whole entire secondary, because Jim Knowles actually has a background in coaching the secondaries as well, as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and let Coy McFarlane up him up to the performance to full-time positional coach and might give him a big bump and pay. Maybe he sticks around a little bit longer then, or do you think maybe it doesn't matter what we do there? If he gets a, 
like a, a linebacker position coach. I mean, say, let's say it's a big school, like, I don't know, Oklahoma call comes calling, you know, uh, with Brent Venables. And they say, well, hey, we need a linebacker coach. This guy was really good and he knows the area. Let's uh, bring him back. Do you think it's possible he would stick it out here or he just go and like, I got to do my own thing now? I think you got to want to hold on to this guy for as long as you can. Um, so you can do whatever so, you can. So what, if it means, say, like, hypothetically, LJ retires at the end, end of the year, right? Mm-hmm. You, you mean you move him somewhere? You find a, I think you find a spot for him on staff. Um, I got you. Give him that big bump and pay, yeah. Yeah, and not necessarily even being a D line coach, you know what I mean? But having Knowles kind of do everything as far as the front, you know what I mean? As far as the mm. front four, and have him have that responsibility. Um, so it's, I think they want to keep him. Uh, they're already impressed with how he's shown. Um, all the kids love him so far in the room, and I mean half the process. Half the process is getting these kids to buy in that are already yeah, in the room before you can get. I mean, your best recruiters are on, on st- already on the roster. Those are the guys that recruit the hardest for you. And if they're not going to do that, if they don't feel that this guy has their best interest and can actually make them achieve their goals. Yeah, and it obviously says a lot that Jim Knowles stole him from the Oklahoma State staff and said, "This guy's going to come with me. He's one of my right hand men, obviously, and I need him on my staff." They, it obviously. Uh, to sell it to the rest of the kids, right? To I mean, because Jim can't be everywhere at once, and he's got to have the people he trusts. He knows I'm going to train his system. Part of why Tanner McAllister's here, helping train the system. Uh, the I cannot remember his name, Guerriere, the safety. Uh, he's like a he's, consultant. Yeah, Duke. I think he's another guy that you that they're hoping that you stays want to hang on to, right? Little bit. Yeah, they. I mean, you've already oh. seen all the DB recruits talking about him. I mean, he's in tagged in every one of the posts as far as like the trainings and already mm-hmm. like summer high, like highlight videos that they, I, I mean, he was a pretty highly respected coach at Duke. Um, and I was actually, a lot of people in the industry were surprised that he was let go. Um, but the new head coach, obviously he's a defensive guy. He wants to bring in his own guys, which um, mm-hmm. I understand that. Um, I was kind of surprised. I mean, it shows, doesn't it show the love and respect Jim Knowles commands when these guys are taking like consultant positions to come be a part of the staff. Yeah. I mean, that was a defensive State coordinator at Duke. Oklahoma State wanted to keep McFarland too, you know what I mean? At yeah. linebacker coach. So, I mean, and he wouldn't have a transition. He wouldn't have had to move on. Uh, he would have had his role, you know what I mean? That made a lot more of money. familiarity. And the same with Gary. I mean, a lot of guys wanted him, especially, I wouldn't say big offers right now, but um, a lot of analyst jobs and things like that from, I mean, mm-hmm. Alabama. Um, I know George looked at him. So, I mean, there's some big time schools looking at these guys, even for analyst roles. Um, but you see how Nick Saban does it. They're not analysts for long. No. Um, you get them on staff any way you possible and kind of rehab their career, even if they don't necessarily need that rehab. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's just building that relationship and it's easier to get them when they're at that role. And then when you need them, <laughs> it is nice to see Nick Ryan day, take that Nick Saban approach and getting really good, good coaches to be analysts, even uh, just to stay like, look, you're, this is not your end all be all you're going to, it's just a stepping stone to get to where you want to go, but we need you on staff now. Uh, and it showed how serious Ryan day is about fixing the defense to be completely honest with you as well. But let's go into like what Coy McFarland's going to specifically do for the linebackers. Obviously we've established he's the right-hand man for Jim Knowles. Jim's the linebacker coach officially, but Jim can't, he's got to be the D coordinator. He can't be everywhere at once. And Coy needs to have that added responsibility to look, look, this is Dylan. This is what he's got to do. We haven't had good linebacker play since Luke Fickle. Yeah, that's these are some big shoes to fill. Like, look, we have not had that traditional Ohio State football uh, linebacker play since Luke Fickle's been here. That's 2015. Yeah, we've it had some time... good players here and there, but not consistent unit. Like, exactly, before. exactly. We've had good players, but we have not had that consistent unit be a great unit for Ohio State. We used to be just constant, consistently great units every year. What is the responsibility? How is he going to get us back there? Well, to be honest, a lot of it stems from scheme uh, as much as anything as far as actual coaching goes. He knows the scheme, uh, the spill and kill that a lot of these guys are going to um, crash down the fronts and make. What is the spill and kill? You gotta, I mean, I'm a layman here. What? You're crashing down the fronts, shooting the gaps, gotcha. and you're forcing the ball out. So the linebacker, you're making the guys run wide, you know mm-hmm. what I mean, the ball carriers. And you're hoping that these linebackers can chase them down. And that's why you need athletic linebackers. Um, and not kind of the big lumbering ones. Um, remember how we were talking about you and me were talking about half a scheme uh, mm-hmm. difference in recruiting linebackers. You know what I mean? You're going to yeah, see you it. Did. Well. You brought you that need, up frequently. Yeah. You need, uh, you're going to need a lot of different guys. You're going to need that six, one, six, two, 220 pound guys that can run sideline to sideline. But 
the tackling. Um, you watch them, they don't miss tackles, Oklahoma State. That's one thing I know. They led the nation, didn't they? And and uh and non missed tackles or whatever that stat was. Uh, yeah. I can't I don't yeah, they led the nation in not missing tackles, I think. Yeah, and that's one thing that Coy is big on. Um if you watch it, I mean kind of as Chris Ash, you know that rugby style? Yes. It's similar. I mean, it's very similar to that. Um, and we Josh saw Perry it. described it as taking out the motor. You take out their legs, basically. Yeah. I mean, there's very few guys that are powering through it. You know, I mean, there, there are some guys that are going to do it no matter what at running back. I mean, we saw it Hassan Haskins, the guy like that, you know, I mean, that's 225 pounds, big, strong kid. That's those guys are going to have their success no matter what kind of tackling you're doing consistently. Mm -hmm. But if you get enough guys around you, that's the, that's the key. Um, and it's kind of teaching the angles. And that's one of the things. So tackling and angles is a big one that Coy is like, I saw that I really noticed from their defense was huge on is having guys around the ball carry. That's there's so many times last year that if you made one guy miss you, you had Bryson Shaw 25 yards down the field. You know what I mean? Trying to chase you. And I mean, he was, he was trying to reason with the guy. <laughs> and so like, it was, Oh, not even, not even picking on Shaw. It's whoever early on, especially Proctor was there too. You know what I mean? Trying to chase down the guys. It's, you can't have that. I did notice our safety angles were really piss poor last year. It was. And it all, I mean, obviously it starts in the front, whether it's yeah. linebackers or the front four, um, but linebackers, I mean, you kind of guys need those guys to be ready and be there and not just, and pretty much maintain leverage is what you yeah. need for those guys. And that's the thing that we were really lacking. And I think that just the consistency, um, mm -hmm. repetition, you know what I mean? Just being able to do the same thing over and over again and consistently do it at a high level. I'm not saying that they need to be the best in the top five in the country. You know what I mean? And tackling this year, but just showing great improvement yeah. um, is a big thing. And, and those big plays, they're going to happen no matter who you're, you know, who you are, no matter what scheme you run or anything like that. But if you can just limit those, I mean, as much as they Oklahoma state blitz last year and put pressure on these guys and left them on islands, they always found a way, a way to rally to the ball carrier. Um, I noticed that in the spring game, we were rallying a lot better already. Zach Smith brought it up as we, as our linebackers were reading their trigger points really quickly. Yeah. You're not, they're not just waiting, um, yeah. moving around for the ball to come there. And so that's a big key. And so, I mean, just teaching, you're not chasing every decoy like Tommy Eichenberg against Oregon. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, sometimes you have to go around the pulling guard. You know what I mean? Sometimes mm -hmm. you have to power through them and disengage them. So I mean, there's just different techniques that they're going to have to do. And I feel like, we weren't cohesive in that front as far as what we were teaching and then consistently doing it. So that's, that's a big area. I think that just teaching basic fundamentals really well in a high level, um, you're going to see drastic results maybe not, maybe not where we want to be just as in general, but just from the tackling aspect, I feel like that can uh, propel us. Yeah, absolutely. I was talking to our good friend B Moses about this privately and I was saying, look, I, I think it's going to, progress back to the silver bullet linebacker uh, that we expect not necessarily this year but i just think going forward you're going to see it get better and better and better and the culture is going to change in the linebacker room because I, I had high hopes for al washington it flailed out it is what it is part of that was scheme i'm not totally putting it all on al uh but you know i think once you get guys like i think steel will be good this year i think eichenberg will be good this year i actually think he was he, he finished strong i think he's gonna get it um I don't know how much Mitchell will play. I don't know how much Naote will play. I don't know how much Chip Tranum will play. I don't know. But I will say this. I think once we see guys like C.J. Hicks and Gabe Powers completely take over that linebacker room, maybe with Reed Caricos uh, put in there as well, I, I, and I'm forgetting Cody Simon as well. I don't know. Some, somebody's going to transfer out because we only got two linebackers. Some, somebody's going to. But anyway, I think what you, I'm putting it on C.J. and Gabe right now because they're the two, they're the two big boys uh, recruits in that, in that room right now. I think in a, in a, maybe in a year's time when you see them start to take over, that's when you see that we re a return to that silver bullet linebacker play behind the line of scrimmage attack. Uh, I, I was watching the Utah game in Rose Bowl uh, a couple days ago, and we when Eichenberg made a attack on the attack on the law for loss in the backfield, it kind of shocked me. We just don't see that anymore with you our know, line. We let them get two or three yards and then tackle them down, but we don't ever shoot the gaps. You know what I mean? And trigger. And exactly. It, it was. It was like. It, you notice it over the last several years, like, wow, we don't make plays in the linebacking crew anymore. I mean, they're just kind of there. They're there. there. Yeah, they they let you get a couple yards and they slow you down. But, yeah, it hasn't been. I mean, if you get an opponent in second and 13, that's a lot different. That changes their whole game plan, you know, as opposed to second and six. 100%. You know what they're doing on second and 13 most often. So. Yeah. 
So Coyle McFarland, Dylan, you're saying is going to be to have the biggest impact in improving our linebacker play. And, and he's going to be a household name for uh, Buckeye fans, you think, at the end of the season as far as coaching is concerned. Yeah, right? I mean, I think it took a while and even took me a while to believe in Dennis um, being a great coach. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But just because it's like you said, it's Jim Knowles and Coyle McFarland and you see Ryan Day, it's his offense and his quarterbacks. But Dennis is slowly developing that reputation that he's not just – Nepium, it's not just Nepium. Not just getting him coffee, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's actually helping develop these guys. And, I mean, Ryan Day. Well, Haskins and Fields and Stroud are all giving him credit. Corey Dennis, yeah, a lot of they, credit. They so. can only spend so much time um, with these quarterbacks. And I feel it's the same with Knowles, especially when he has to command the whole defense. Exactly. He only spends so much time with exactly your position, you know what I mean? So it's tough to have one whole position, like especially linebackers, that we, especially when we're in a position we've struggled with um, so mightily in the last five years, six years that I feel like he has a huge role um, improving our defense and making it a lot better. Not still, I just, like you kind of, you said, it's not going to be great this year, but it's going to be an improved defense. And I feel yeah. like that starts in the front seven. And uh, I feel like our line's not going to be a problem with LJ this year, but mm-hmm. our, front, our, our linebackers is a, kind of a big deal. And I think that's kind of where we're going next. And it was really going to help us get to the next level. Coy McFarland, remember the name, folks. And also remember the name Dylan Freeman, Nat Dylan Freeman VP. I find him on Twitter. Dylan, thanks for coming on, man. We appreciate it. Coy McFarland is a name we're all going to remember. We're all going to come back to this show after the season and go, man, Dylan had it right. So appreciate you, Dylan. Of course, sir. Anyway, guys, as always, subscribe to the channel. If you like what you see, like the video. It helps our algorithm. Ohio State Football was gotten great right here on YouTube, guys. Appreciate you guys. Floco is out. Goodbye, God bless, and go Bucks.